Okay, let's talk about prevention. Uh, let's, maybe something we can do about this. Uh, and, and, and how has that changed? Introductions. Dr. Graham Kolditz from the Seitman Cancer Center. Thanks for being here. April Zubik, American Cancer Society. Thank you as well. Also, Angela Claiborne, Myrtle Hilliard Davis, Comprehensive Health Centers, Inc. Thanks for being here. And Beverly McKee, Breast Cancer Warrior. Yes. Um, one in two men, one in three women will suffer from, suffer from cancer in their lifetime. Uh, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a shocking statistic. Uh, is, there anything, is there anything we can do about that? Are we, are we, is this a losing proposition? That we, one, two, one, one of us, statistically speaking. <laughs> we can prevent more than half of cancer. We can avoid smoking, avoid weight gain, lose weight, uh, cut back or avoid alcohol. Uh, change other parts of our diet. So there are plenty of things we could already be doing to cut the chance of cancer. Agree? Absolutely agree. And um, tobacco and obesity are major things that are affecting um, cancer death rates, cancer diagnosis rates. There's a lot we can do right here in Missouri and Illinois. We're lucky we have smoke-free laws that are very strong. Um, in Missouri, we have the lowest tobacco tax. We don't have comprehensive smoke-free state. These things could help a lot and provide some funding to make sure that kids don't start smoking. And obesity, I think, is an area that we're learning more and more about. Um, but research from the American Cancer Society shows that obesity can increase your chances of more than 10 different types of cancer. I mean, is prevention changing, too? Is there, is there a different way, a paradigm shift of any kind that you've seen? When it comes to prevention? I think this obesity story, really in the space of 15 years, we've gone from sort of knowing that obesity is related to postmenopausal breast cancer and endometrial cancer to now this much longer list of cancers, uh, understanding also whether it's weight gain early in life, later in life, and the implications of that for where we should focus our prevention efforts. It seems, am I the only one that thinks this is a, kind of a scary conversation to have? I think it's scary, but if you've been diagnosed with cancer and you're a survivor like I am, it's something that's very much a part of your world every day. And so I think by talking about it, it takes away some of the fear. I also think that sometimes when people find something wrong or they have that gut instinct that something's wrong, they're afraid to go to the doctor. And by having these conversations just like this, I think that will get people to the doctor more quickly. It could be nothing, but we also know that the sooner that we find cancer and the sooner we start treating it, that the odds of survival increase dramatically. Do you see that, Angela? People are afraid to just even find out that they might have something wrong. Uh, yes, we see that at the health center. Uh, that's why we have a lot of uh, health and intervention programs. Is it with men? I think traditionally that's how we think of us guys. Is that, is Men that, traditionally, but uh, most often uh, low-income individuals, period, because they want to avoid the cost of treatment and knowing that they're sick. So uh, for us at the health center, we provide preventive services for all of our patients. That's actually a trend with HRSA, which is our main offender, that we screen for those types of cancers. So we do the tobacco screening for every patient that visits the health center. We provide a lot of screening tools for our patients. And once we uh, provide those trainings, we give them education and direct them to resources. For example, just to give a small example, we provided almost 1,200 mammogram testing and 52 were abnormal findings. And we were able to direct those patients to Sightman Cancer Center and some of the other resources. But they came into the health center. So as she was stating, if you just provide, go to your doctor, you can uh, receive those services and learn a lot. So. There are a lot of people that don't have access to, to what you're talking about? There are a lot. At our center, we serve 30,000 persons uh, each year, and 15,000 are uninsured. We're, uh, that's why we're there. We're there as a fairly qualified health center to take care of individuals without insurance. And of those persons I talked about that were uh, screened, half of those persons were uninsured. But we have some pilot programs, such as Gateway to Better Health, that help with our funding uh, for our patients. They provide specialty funding, so when we send those patients, they actually pay for it. That came about through the St. Louis Connect Care Closure, an awesome program. So it's there, but we need awareness. Patients need to, or individuals, really need to visit the FQACs, uh, community health centers, as they may know it, in St. Louis. Uh, that's where we're there, with a safety net for that population. We're the, we're the, this is the country where we're supposed to be the best at chronic diseases and, and 
crisis type situation. But, I get, but if you don't have access to it, that doesn't matter, I guess. Well, yeah, go. Yeah. There's, the, there's the fear of the test and there's the fear <laughs> of the cost. But there, I have two things to say to that. One is um, it's Colon Cancer Awareness Month. So for example, part of the barriers in getting people screened is that they just don't want to get that test. Mm -hmm. Someone who is going through colon cancer will say the little bit of uncomfort or unease that you're going to have in getting this test is better than going through chemotherapy. The other thing is there's resources out there and oftentimes people don't know that they're there until they need it. For breast cancer, for example, there's the National Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program, which is a very long word, but in Missouri, we call it Show Me Healthy Woman. Mm -hmm. And it's a program that we fight for funding for every single year. And it provides breast and cervical cancer screenings to people who don't have insurance or are underinsured. And if there's a diagnosis, the great thing about this program is it'll see you through treatment. We were talking about what can we do. How, how, is, is there a way to break down how much of uh, what we're dealing with here is uh, a predisposition, kind of a genetic situation that you can't do anything about, and, and how much of it is something you can do about. Is there a way to, do we know that? Can we break that down? Sure, sure. I think we can uh, break out a subset of uh, most cancer sites, breast, ovary, other sites where there's a uh, known hereditary component but usually we're talking five to 10% of all the cancers, leaving really, say, the other 90% that's largely driven by our lifestyle and environment, non-directly uh, inherited genetic factors. And too often, I think, we're putting off worrying or reacting, increasing physical activity, changing diet, that losing weight, the things that really we can be doing, we can be doing with our children to make sure they're starting life healthier. The tobacco smoking we mentioned earlier, uh, canning booths and excess uh, sunburns in kids change their lifetime risk of melanoma. There are things that we can be doing right now in our society, in our schools, that will change risk going forward. But knowing it, knowing what to do and knowing the risk. So that's so important education, knowing how to eat right, having access to uh, healthy foods, that's so important. We do some of that education mm -hmm. work from Siteman through the St. Louis American radio programs, ACS works on these same sorts of things to, to help raise awareness mm -hmm. that there's access through these programs and that there's not just access to have the screening test but also to treatment follow up if the test is positive. What do you think about Angelina Jolie? And not her, and not her movies, necessarily. Well, you know, or, her, or her husband, God love him, is a Missourian. <laughs> he is a Missourian. I've actually met his brother. Yeah. Angelina, and I, Jolie, Angelina Jolie and I have something in common. We both have the bracket. She has BRCA1, I have BRCA2 gene mutation. And that puts us both at a higher risk of developing both a breast, ovarian, and a, and a host of other cancers. And so by knowing that, that gives her, in her case, she was prophylactic mastectomy. She had a prophylactic partial hysterectomy. For me, I found out after I was diagnosed with breast cancer that I have the BRCA2 gene. And I was able to do a prophylactic hysterectomy, which puts me at almost no risk now of developing ovarian cancer. But if I hadn't had that, I was at much higher risk. So I think the spotlight that she puts on it for everybody, and everybody has their mm -hmm. opinion of how she's done it, but the mere fact that we're all talking about the BRCA2 gene, the BRCA1 gene right now, and all the things that women can do, I think it's fabulous that she's talking about it, sharing her story. Is it, is it a growing trend, or is this just something that you can you do and you can afford it, and you're a, 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 a do, are more women taking this approach? Do you see, think this will increase? I think it's such a personal thing, but it's so empowering to know that we can get so much information and learn so much and be able to weigh the risks and the benefits and talk through with our doctor and mm -hmm. research um, the situation and make that decision. And the costs are coming down for the test as well, which is good for people who can, now we can afford it. And insurance pays for it a great deal of the time. And I don't know if the clinic offers anything like that for people who are uninsured, but I do know that the, the cost has come down dramatically. Because uh, we don't offer it, but with the Gateway to Better Health program, for those persons who may be interested, they are referred out to the other um, hospital systems, and the hospital systems have a 
um, a program where they can receive those on discount and we help them with that. So it's an awesome benefit for the community. Stick with us for one second.